Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about an upcoming fight between Roberto Ortiz, whose nickname is politically incorrect. It's Massa, right? He's 34-0-1, and, and he's taking on the better known, in my opinion, much better tested, Lucas Matisse, right? Now, Matisse is 35-3 and with 33 KOs. Now let me just point out that I looked at some film of Roberto Ortiz. I've posted a fight of his in my uh, favorites on my YouTube channel page. I encourage people to look at that fight. Here's what I believe his fight style is. First, he's tall, right? He's 5'9 or 5'10, depending on what article you read. But he gives up his height. He doesn't know how to use his height. He bends over. He fights small to me. He's front foot heavy, right? So he's in there coming forward, right? In my opinion, a bit recklessly. When he gets into rhythm, in my opinion, he becomes a mid-range hooker, right? The punches look a little bit wide to me when viewed through the prism of, let's say, a typical world-class fighter. He's not defensively gifted. So if you look closely at the first round of his fight against Florencio Castellano, you're going to see what, in my opinion, should have been called a knockdown with about one minute and five seconds left in the first round as he fell back into the ropes. Right? When you fall into the ropes and the ropes are the only thing keeping you up, that should be scored a knockdown. Understand, Castellano himself was throwing wide punches. It was a bit curious to see Ortiz hurt in that very first round, right? There are other parts of the first round where he gets buzzed and he has to hold on. So he's not defensively gifted. Let me point out that to me he's a bit of a free swinger. Now this is different than what I call built-in leverage, the kind of leverage that a Lucas Matisse has. Think of uh, Mike Alvarado, where it doesn't look like the guy is swinging freely. Rather, the power is compact power, right? And the guy, when he throws it, already has a lot of force behind it because of how he shifts his body weight, right? In my opinion, Ortiz doesn't have that. Lucas Matisse does, right? Let's talk about Matisse, then I'll give a prediction here. Matisse is shorter than Ortiz, right, by two and a half inches. But more importantly, Matisse can fight small. In other words, Matisse knows how to use his lack of height. He's actually able to bend at the waist. So he's even smaller than his short stature. It gives his opponent less to hit, right? As I said, he has built-in leverage, so he doesn't have to swing wildly. That built-in leverage allows him to counter better than Ortiz because his punches have a shorter distance to go, even though they're power-packed. In fact, if you look at Matisse's films, you're going to see excellent timing. Right? It's not a free-for-all. He's literally surgically picking his counters against people like Lamont Peterson. You'll notice the Peterson fight also is in my favorites folder on my YouTube channel page. I encourage you to take a look at it. Let me point out that even though Matisse is a big-time knockout puncher, right, with a very high KO percentage, he's actually patient. He's a patient stalker. He's not recklessly coming in, like I believe Ortiz is at times. Rather, Matisse seems to time it. Now, don't get me wrong. He's flat-footed, right? In other words, you know, 
his feet are flat on the canvas. He doesn't move that well around the ring. He has problems cutting off the ring. But like Janady Golovkin, he's patiently stalking you down. He doesn't expend a lot of energy recklessly chasing you. Rather, what he's doing is pursuing you systematically. Right? There's much more of an economy of movement with Matisse than there is with Ortiz. Let me uh, also say, too, that there's, in my opinion, a much more strategic method to the madness. Right? Ortiz is just looking for openings so he can wing shots. Matisse, by contrast, in my opinion, is throwing straight body punches. Right? He throws straight body punches to your body. When he sees an opening, he'll open up with things like a left hook to the body. Right? Both of these guys are right-handed. But understand, Matisse is strategically chopping you down. When you start to protect your body, he then starts throwing nice, short left hands up top. Right? I think Matisse is the more advanced fighter here. I think Matisse, who has his hands up, right? look at his defense. It's better than what you would expect from a guy with the high KO ratio. Typically, guys who can show up and get you out of there and then leave, they don't focus on defense as much as Lucas Matisse. Right? I would say Roberto Ortiz doesn't focus on defense as much as Lucas Matisse. Right? I expect Matisse to win this fight. But my primary bet, and I know it's dangerous, is that I don't see this fight going the distance, right? My primary bet's going to be distance. I don't believe this fight goes the distance, right? So I like this fight ending inside of the distance. That might require you to take both guys by KO. Perhaps your casino has a better bet that just says fight won't go the distance. I don't believe this fight goes the distance, right? Next, in terms of picking a side, I like Lucas Matisse in this fight. He's fought the better level of opposition. His punches are the shorter punches. His straight hand to the body, and it's with both hands, I believe is underrated. Right? There's more to hit on Ortiz since he's taller with a bigger upper body than there is on Matisse. Right? And I feel Ortiz, quite frankly, is so accustomed to being the hunter that he won't know what to do when he's the hunted against a shorter guy who understands that sometimes being shorter is a big advantage in boxing. I like Lucas Matisse in this one. I like this fight to end inside of the distance. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.